Just try to relax, Mrs. Schnagel. Yes, we don't wish you to distress yourself, Mrs. Schnagel. But it would help us to know what you were feeling when you were involved as a subject. Uh, well, I... <clears throat> I came here um, to help. You see, that is why I came in the first place. Of course. And then when the Professor Turner told me what I was supposed to do, I... Did you believe him? Absolutely. Uh, I had no reason not to, did I? You didn't reason it was uh, somewhat extreme? Extreme? But these are very extreme times, no? I... Uh, new ideas, I wanted to... I wanted to help with those new ideas. But while all this was going on, how did you feel? Well, while it was going on, it was horrible. Horrible. It was so real, you see, so terribly real. I never for a moment believed that it wasn't. And sitting there and hearing the electric sounds, knowing what it... knowing what it would do to him, it was a nightmare. Does what happened, what you were put through, upset you still, Mrs. Schnegel? I don't know, Dr. Crossland. You see, um, when Professor Turner told me the truth, and when I saw that Mr. Fogel was, uh, anyhow, then I felt better. I was still shocked and surprised. But I did feel better. Have you, however, told anyone about it, about your part in it all? No, no one. Um, I'm a widow. I'm sure you find yourself thinking about it, though. Sometimes. You feel very bad when that comes back to you? You're determined to get an indictment any way you can, aren't you, Doctor? We are simply trying to determine long-range effects here, Professor what these people went through. See, I was... I was born in Düsseldorf, Germany. And I came to this country as a young girl. Then I heard about all the things, the bad things that happened. And after the war, I went back to Germany, to the old country, to visit. And I saw all those people, nice people. And I wondered, I wondered if those things were really true. I mean, how could those things happen? How could people do such things, even if they were told? And so, being a subject here for Professor Turner, even with the suffering that I felt, I understood a little better, perhaps, how those things could happen. I think about that now. You don't resent the situation he forced you into? Resent? <laughs> mm -mm. I do not resent. They came here to help. It happened. What I feel. I feel sad.
You're Barry Dolquist, aren't you? You got me confused with somebody else. Uh, no, I don't think Listen, so. Listen, I don't know who you are or what you want. Do you know what's going on in that hall over there? I couldn't care less. Then why are you hanging around outside here? Don't push me, man. I don't mean to. Why haven't you let them contact you? That's my business. They're asking a lot of questions about you over there. Let them ask. Why don't you just go inside and talk to them? Why are you so interested? I'm a friend of Professor Turner's. Well, if I go in, I'm helping that man out, right? Yes. You're helping everybody out. Including you. Yeah, I know all about you, man. You used to play it safe. That's what they call you, man. Did you know that? You got your jollies from watching what went down in that lab. But you're free and clear. That's real smart. Don't push. No way, man. No way. You're not going to use me to make yourself feel clean, Professor. No way. Now listen to me. Listen! It's just a crowd. Associate Professor of Psychology. I took my PhD at Rutledge, and I have assisted Professor Turner in many other experimental works. Mm -hmm. And you were the experimenter, the authority figure, in many, many of these sessions, weren't you? Yes, I was. So you had an opportunity to observe what has been described as much resistance, resulting in trauma, emotional turmoil. I did. How did you feel when you saw all that happening? Well. Professor, we both know that a certain amount of scientific objectivity is necessary in many experimental works. Correct. And to a degree, so with this one. Are you saying that the trauma you saw being inflicted upon people before your eyes was nothing to you? I didn't say that. I said that a certain amount of scientific objectivity, detachment, if you will, is necessary. That's all I said. Yes, but did you worry about what you saw happening, the long-term effects and so on? I thought about it, yes. Did you mention it to Professor Turner? We discussed the phenomenon of resistance. But, Doctor, on the human level, it never got to you day after day observing all this? It concerned me, yes. Mm -hmm, but not enough to want to not participate? Not really. When we discover the importance of the resistance factor... Incidentally, I agree with Professor Turner that that is probably the most significant contribution this work has produced. The emotional upheaval of the being you're talking about. Yes. And in the debriefings, one... Listen, Doctor. Your subjects were subjected to great stress. Now, I've been listening to you very carefully, but you've never answered me directly. Did this stress, this pain, disturb you, deeply disturb you? Professor, that's a perfectly normal reaction. It was my responsibility to to preserve my scientific objectivity, or else I... Or else what? Or else I would hardly have been doing my job as a scientist. As the subjects were doing their jobs. Thank you, Dr. McBride.